Hey, good evening, everybody. Good evening, good evening. Hey, if you can hear me, clap once. If you can hear me, clap twice. All right, we're so glad to have you with us. Anybody that is watching us online, we are so glad to have you tuning in to us here at True North. Join us anytime you want live in the filling station. To everybody else, does it feel like it's been like a year since we've been together? It feels like it to me. Of course, I was stranded in San Diego for a while, and uh, we, got, we had one True North, and then we had to put the brakes on it, and we're back together. Everybody say hello to uh, Courtney, everybody. Hello, everybody. And everybody say hello to Parker Bates. Hello, hello. hello. Thank, you. thank you. All right. Take it away, Parker. All right. Please silence all cell phones, because... At True North, we say, screens down, fun up. Nice. I'm ready to do that. All right. Very good. Okay. What else we got? So please uh, put away all drinks that do not have a top. You can throw those away during the... I thought we had a spill as I was saying that. Um, yes, what, please what throw away all drinks. What a gag. <laughs> okay. This is... I don't know what's not happening. Sure what was in that cup. <laughs> Let's keep going. Keep on going here. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, there we go. My bad, my bad. Uh, make sure you throw those cups away during, uh, during our four-minute party. Let's see what's coming up next year. Oh, I know. What we got next? Birthdays. All right. Hey, anybody that is a year older or about to be, it's time for our birthdays in the borough. Anybody that's got a birthday from January 14th to the 20th, come on up. Come on up, 14th and 20th. Nobody, come on up. Oh, hey! Reggie. Oh, you did. Hey, we have more. Our very own MBYG fan page. The doggo, is it your birthday? I mean, otherwise, why would you be here? All right, very good. Oh, you already got one? Hey, Jonathan Bolden. Jonathan Bolden's birthday, is it today? It is today. It's right now. Very good. Come on up here, Jonathan. Come on and grab this. Everybody, a big hand for Maddox and Maddie's dad. Wow. The sharpest dress. Sorry. He wins the sharpest dress birthday award, guys. Sorry. Yeah, he, Sorry. he, he did dress up. But he comes in third in the coolest hair department of the birthday. But, 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 but most sharp. Oh, you get two. Sorry. No, just one. Okay. We're going to sing happy birthday to these guys right here after we've given them their Abraham Lincoln, you're still cool uh, sticker. And... As we sing to them, all you got to do is remember three simple words, and those words are. You're still cool. And it goes like this. Sing it out nice well, and loud. One year older than you used to be. Here we go. And you're, you're still, still cool. cool. Come on. You've still got it. It's plain to see. Here we go. You're still cool. Yes, yeah, it's your birthday today. That's, That's why we're, we're here, here to say. say. Come on. That, that you're still cool. cool. Everybody say happy birthday. Congratulations, everybody. Happy birthday, Richie. Happy birthday, Jackson. Happy birthday, Jonathan. All right. Wow. Everybody's a little quiet. You have to liven things, have to liven things up. I, I never do remember to look. Oh, I know what that is. Hey, we have a, uh, we have a birthday party blast from the past. You want to see somebody in this room who's got a birthday? Oh, there's other schools out of the room over there. I feel bad. I'm not going to sit on this one with that. You sit down. It makes me feel taller <laughs> oh, when everybody's. Okay. All right. Yeah. Is that better? That's good. More eye level now. Yeah. You said it, not me. I didn't. Um, okay. Birthday party blast from the past. Somebody in this room is about to see themselves at a birthday when they were younger. Let's find out who it is. Here we go. That was great. Zach, I don't know. Oh, can, um, can never guess who that is. Yeah. Zach, you were a blonde. I didn't realize that. Is that a baseball game? And you're at Chuck E. Cheese, it looks like. I dyed my hair broke. Oh, you dyed your hair broke. Okay. Alex, I'd love to know, Alex, caption that picture for us. What are you, what's going on in your mind? Wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> All right. Very good. That was the, uh, the birthday party blast from the past. There's our birthdays in the borough. Hey, we're going to change gears here for just a second, guys, if you'll just humor us for just a moment. Okay. Um, because we, we thought of, uh, threw a picture of Zach up there. Your birthday, if I understand, is July the 25th. Yes. All right. Uh, July the 25th also happens to be the same birthday as a dear friend 
of the NBYGs, who many of you in this room would say, I don't really know this person because it's been a couple of years since they've been able to be fully involved. But many of you, especially guys in the room, you would know uh, that July the 25th is also the birthday of one of our dear, dear friends, Randy Hobbs, who is now with Jesus and hopefully watching True North, not online, but from his heavenly reward. Um, I will do my best. Um, I, I think I can make it, but I'm not sure that I can. Again, I'm just not going to look at a lot of pictures. Um, but I, I want to share with you all that, um, man, I, I just, it's frustrating to me that there's so many of you in the room who do not know how much this guy loved the NBYG and loved you and what he poured into it. Uh, a lot of you would say, I don't even know who that is. Some of you guys, you would know, you would know Randy. Randy cooked in Mexico with us for many years, was always in the kitchen always made bacon. Randy was the guy that made the baked beans we had on Slick Pig Night. The awesome baked beans with the meat and the pineapple and the, I mean, they, were, they weren't just baked beans. Like, they were baked beans. And Randy made the dirt cake that we had at the retreat. Um, and Randy was a part of the group before I got here in 2001. There's people sitting back here that served alongside Randy um, years before I even became a part of this ministry. And Randy was the first person to knock on my door in 2001 and brought us a pineapple upside down cake on a big, huge platter that he had made, knocked on our door. And I, at the time, I didn't even know how to work the lock on our glass uh, you know, security door. I couldn't even get the door open and nobody had come to our front door yet. And I had to have Randy go around to the back. We didn't have a side door at the time. And Randy went around to the back and I'm like, sorry, I don't know how to open our door. And Randy came, and uh, this is from an 80s uh, retreat that we had, which is a cool picture. Randy's great nephew was here and loved that picture, and Mike Jones was like, you like that picture? And he said, oh, I love that picture. And Randy, uh, Mike made a poster of Randy, of this, this picture here, and rolled it up and gave it to his great nephew, and he was like, oh, I'm going to hang this in my room. Uh, Randy loved you all so much, and yet I realize there's some of you that don't know um, you don't know who he is. But what some of you don't know is that some of you went to Winterfest because of this man. And some of you went on fall retreats because of this guy. Whenever we did partial scholarships that we advertise, including some of you that are going on scholarship to Winterfest this year, it's because Randy wrote us a check at the end of last year and let us know, I want people to be able to go. You're, some of you got to go to Mexico. Some of you got to go to Impact. Some of you got to go on guys retreats. Some of you got to participate in things that, that you had no idea where it was coming from, but it's because of the generosity of Randy, who took so many pictures and video. I'll say more about this at his celebration of life, but... Oh, wow. Um, I make no apologies for being a 52-year-old guy who's very emotional because um, I want you to have people in your life like Randy. I don't want to make you sad because I'm extremely glad that he's no longer suffering. Randy suffered with uh, Marfan syndrome and pancreatic cancer. This is the last picture that I took of Randy at our fall retreat. It was the last time that I saw him and talked with him was uh, at our fall retreat. And Randy showed up and was sitting in the back and here he is praying for you all as you were getting ready to worship. And he was, he was praying for you. And I uh, Almost everybody in the room has eaten something that was made by Randy Hobbs, and you may have never known it. Almost all of you have benefited from something that was purchased for our youth ministry because of Randy Hobbs. The toy drive was made possible because when we needed money to get bailed out of a hole, Randy would write a large check. And, um, and yet, you know, a lot of you would say, maybe I, I, I never had a conversation with Mr. Randy. But this, um, this weekend, on Friday, there's a visitation. He has one living sister, and Randy never married, and he never had um, any kids. But Nelson Eddy said it best. He said, Randy Hobbs never had any kids, but he had so many children. And uh, all, of, all of you, all of us, are, are family of Randy. There'll be a visitation here Friday from 4 to 8, and then a celebration of his life Saturday at 11 
following a, an hour visitation. And I would love, the family would love, if some of you could give a, 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 you know, an hour of your Saturday morning to, to show up and we're going to sing some songs together and we're going to share some more pictures and share some more stories. There'll be some tears. There's definitely going to be some laughs. I can tell you that because Mike and I have been working on some video clips and there's going to be some laughs. But um, I, I, would, I want to invite you there. There's no obligation. And I know this, this, you, a lot of you don't know who Randy is maybe, but if you, especially some of you guys, Randy's contributions were really helping out in, in the kitchen at the guys' retreat. And some of you, I doubt anybody in here actually went to a Mexico trip that Randy went on unless you're somebody that's older. But if you have a Randy story or memory, would you text that to me or email that to me? Even if you say, I don't really know him, but I have this one memory, or this is the one thing I associate with that guy you showed a picture of, and I'm going to share some of those stories, but I need, I need your stories to help participate in that. I don't want to kill the mood of tonight, and so we're going to bring it back up a little bit later, but I just wanted to take a moment and, um, and say something about a man that was a dear, dear friend. He recorded just about everything this youth group ever did, every baptism, every funeral, every wedding, every graduation service, every retreat. Um, and his family brought us uh, jump drives and videos, and we have literally, we have 20 years of ministry sitting in the floor of my office right now. And it's because Randy was at every single one of those things. And so we want to honor his life. I realize that some of you are visiting and you're like, wow, this is a real bummer. I didn't want to walk into this tonight. Uh, please don't see it as a bummer. Just see it as a, 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 we're a family that loves the people that are part of our family. And uh, I, 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 we want to honor Randy. So our, our thanks to Randy. His family could not be here tonight because they're still trying to make arrangements, but we'd love to see you Friday night or we'd love to see you on Saturday. Teens, I know you, you guys don't go to a lot of visitations. Um, maybe you, you've, you know, we've all had to go to funerals for our grandparents and other loved ones, but some of you haven't, uh, thankfully, have not had that experience yet. But if you showed up at a visitation and just walked down the line and said, hey, I'm in the youth group, and, and I, just, I just wanted to be here to say I love Randy. Uh, that would mean a lot to them. So that's what's happening there, okay? If you got it, say got it. I made it through. Um, and uh, we love Randy, and I'm thankful for the way that, uh, that you all loved uh, love Randy. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to uh, take a pause for just a minute, and we're going to let you kind of cheer each other up. We're going to have what we call a four-minute party. We have some special guests going to make an announcement after this four-minute party. Uh, Parker, tell us what's going to happen during the four-minute party, especially if you're a first-time guest to the NBYG. So during our four-minute party, if you are a first-time guest, come up here. We have a $5 Baskins Robin gift card. Why would you not want one of those? So if you're a first-time guest, come up. And the only rule during the four-minute party is you can't talk to anybody that you do know until you talk to somebody that you don't know. It's a very simple rule. It really is a very simple rule. Yep. And I'm going to go meet our special guest while we're waiting uh, to do this because I don't know them. And they'll be the people that I don't know. We All want right. you to find somebody that you don't know before you find somebody you do know. Our teen greeters, come on up here and get ready. If you're a guest, use this time. Let's all stand up and let's have a four-minute party. Let's go. Let's go. Four minutes. Okay. okay. I'm about to have a good day. Hey, everybody. I hope I didn't bring the mood down too much there with that announcement, but we love Randy Hobbs, and Randy loved True North, and he loved the youth group. Um, so you can join us. There, there will be a celebration of life. It's going to be live stream. We'll send out that link. We'll text it out. We'll email it. So you can join us for that live. Um, but we got a big night planned, lots of fun things, a lot more laughs. So uh, stay with us, and we'll, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Hello. Hello, I'm Nathan. Hey, uh, sadly, the epic dude bro man who is supposed to be doing this is not here right now. I'm Ethan and I'll be taking over for him. Uh, I'd like to just say, hi, how are you? I know the ice has been tough recently, but thankfully that's all over. Oh, by the way, you look beautiful today. Um, I can't really think of anything else other than that. You just look amazing. It's, it's incredible. Bye. Okay, hey, thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much for uh, allowing me to have that moment. I forgot one piece. I forgot one piece. We are going to live stream, thanks to our tech guys and their generosity, because it's not a part of their job. They're going to be there to uh, help uh, live stream Randy's service. So any of you watching online, we're going to send a link out. And anybody that is, has uh, uh, older siblings or other family members, we can send that out. So that service will be available for you to watch online live and after the fact. So there we go. All right. 
We have some special guests we want you to meet, but first, we want you to, uh, to watch this. Check it out. A generation waits for us to make a decision. What will we give our lives for? So many things compete to take the center in our lives. Some of them good, some of them bad. Yet when we gain them, something is still missing. Because fulfillment can only be found when we are fulfilled by Jesus. And we can only find our purpose when we respond to the greatest need. The need Jesus saw and responded to, humanity. We don't have a marketing campaign, only a question. Almost half the world has no access to the gospel. A generation is in need. What's your response? I want you to meet three people that I just met. There's Bella and Ellie and Moses from The Sin. Let's welcome them. Give them an NBYG welcome. Come on up here, guys. There you go. All right. Uh, welcome. We're glad that you're here. Thank you. Thank you All right. So uh, much. Tell us who you are and why you're here tonight. Everybody, give them your uh, utmost attention, please. All right. I'm Ellie, and tonight I'm here. I'm actually a high school student as well. And I am just here because my heart burns for Gen Z and to, to see Gen Z living in intimate relationship with the Lord, not just on Wednesdays and not just leaning on your lovely youth pastor or your pastor on Sundays, but actually to live in relationship with Jesus daily. Um, and I just want to remind you guys that, um, well, a show of hands, who here knows what the Great Commission is? Do any of you guys know? I know I talked about that in that video. Yeah, I just want to read it real quick, but it's Matthew 28, 18. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go making and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And truly, I am with you always to the end of the end of the very age. And I just want to encourage you guys that this is your permission slip to go. Notice how it doesn't just say your youth pastor. It doesn't just say your teachers or whatnot. It literally says that we have the permission to go to our friends, to our family, to the people in the stores. Literally, wherever we are, we get to share the goodness of God. And I just want to let you guys know that like the statistics of our generation say that we're a biblically illiterate generation, but I know God has something else in store for our generation. And that's where the send comes in handy. But on February 3rd, there will be a gathering at Bridgestone Arena. Um, and yeah, it's, a, it's basically just a stadium gathering. And it's all about reaching Gen Z with the gospel and reaching them with the Great Commission and sending them forth into that. So we just wanted to invite you guys to that. Um, and also this Saturday, the 27th, um, at... Mr. Mr. Curry Peacock's um, barn, right. we are having a worship and prayer night and just casting vision for our generation and for the sin, and would love it if you guys could come on out and, yeah, see you there. But, yeah, yeah. That's going to be the 27th, which is Saturday night, and it's going to be, what you see here, a Gen Z uh, rally sponsored by the sin to kind of promote what's going to happen in February at Bridgestone, right? Yes. All right, yeah. what else you want to tell us about it? Yeah, so the send, what's so crazy so far, um, just to give you guys some context for what God has already been doing in the Nashville and the Tennessee area. So on the 3rd, we already have 10,000 people who are going to come to the send. And we're hoping to literally, that we're just going to fill that arena. We're going to worship Jesus. It's a 10-hour event. And I would really encourage you guys to bring your family members, bring your unsaved friends, whoever it is, because the send is for everyone. The whole point that we gather together is to equip people to be able to see salvations and healings and then sending people out with new relationships with Jesus and really it's just the send has been amazing the send personally changed my life um, I went to a send gathering in Kansas City actually in 2022 it was at um, Arrowhead Stadium where the Chiefs play which is crazy I think it was like 36,000 people came together to worship and it was just so beautiful and from that moment my heart was marked for missions and now I'm living 
as an active missionary, and I'm only 18 years old. And so I just want to give you guys permission that you're not too young. There isn't, you don't have to graduate high school. You don't have to do all of these things to be able to be a missionary or to even just reach your friends with the gospel. You can do that exactly where you are right here, right now. And Jesus isn't asking for your perfection. He isn't asking you to do everything perfectly. He's simply asking for your yes. And the send is really just communicating that. So we would love it if you would join us on February 3rd at the send. And then also this Saturday on the 27th at Mr. Curry's Farm. And we'll send out more info to you as well with the address so you can do that. Moses, you got anything you want to add? I love the send. <laughs> uh, you're from Thompson Station, you said. Yes, sir. Yeah. Girls here are from Washington State. Yes. Yeah. Right? Okay. And are you a part of, how many people are on your team? You have yeah. a... Yeah, so the SEND team has a lot of different people and multiple organizations all together because we all have the same heart, and the heartbeat is really the Great Commission and the last things that Jesus commanded us as disciples um, is to make more disciples, to go into all the world. And so what she read, Matthew 28, 18. Um, and so it's just basically a lot of people with that heart and ministries like YWAM, uh, Circuit Riders, Carry the Love, um, and us actually... We're a 50-state tour team, just our team. We're going to go to all 50 states in the next eight months um, to preach the gospel and the Great Commission to activate Gen Z into a, hopefully a missions movement out of America. So that's kind of our heart as well. And so, yeah, we're just really excited for what God's been doing the last few days and what he's going to do through this awesome. end. So, well, yeah. we can, I don't know if it's just, surely I'm not the only one that can hear their heart and their passion. I'm just thinking, what would a room full of people with this heart and this passion uh, be like. And some of you are probably thinking, oh yeah, man, that is awesome. And others of you are like, wait, oh, uh, okay. I'm, uh, that is, you know, they, 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 are, they are in this too much. Well, follow them. Uh, there you go, follow, follow their lead. We're glad to have you guys here. You have a final, final word. Yeah, we're, we're just going to pray us. Yeah, <laughs> but Lord God, we just thank you. We thank you for this generation and that you have a different word for us, God. We thank you that you are sending a fire in our hearts to reach the lost and just to meet with you, King Jesus. We thank you. We thank you for the send. We thank you that all is to come on February 3rd and January 27th and that you would just meet hearts so divinely, God, and just that you would break the normality of Gen Z being a depressed generation or an anxiety and anxious generation, but actually we would be a generation with joy living and running out of our bellies, Lord. Yes. God, we thank you. We thank you and we honor you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Such, Amen. such an honor to just be able to share this with you guys and hope to see you there. It's going to be a grand old party. Hey, NBYG, <laughs> let's share our thanks to Bella and Ellie and Moses. Good job, y'all. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you. Very good. Yep, I get it. Yeah, thanks so much. Nice job. All right. Wow. That was awesome to have them there. Hey, here's what we're going to do. Let's do this. Uh, we have a couple more announcements. And then in just a minute, guys, we're going to... Um, we're going we're gonna to skip a, 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 a bunch of things, uh, Elijah, and we'll, we'll, I'll cue you in here in just a second. But uh, we'll po uh, post some information about that rally out at the Curry Peacock Farm. It's where our fireworks of Palooza has been, so you guys already know how to get out there. But that's going to be on, uh, on Saturday night. Okay. Hey, today's Wednesday, tomorrow's Thursday, and that means what, Courtney? Panera! for a Bible study and some good food. It is, we've been having some really good conversation and I cannot wait to see you all there. All right, that's coming up uh, this week. Hey, February is right around the corner. So two things that means, two things that means. One, one, uh, not one of our, you know, maybe biggest um, uh, uh, evangelistic events, but it could be. If you invited somebody who just needed to hang out, we're gonna be in here on Sunday. February the 2nd, 11th, February the 11th, that's right, um, at 5 p.m. We're going to meet in here for our Super Bowl party. That'll be preceded by our Winterfest chaperone meeting. And then we're going to hang out here, watch the game, have an open gym, bring your friends. It's going to be an incredible night. That's going to get us set up for, you know what, everybody, it's getting closer and closer and closer. Here we are. Okay. Right now, we have, I believe, 
maybe 14 spots available? 13. 13. We have 13, 13. spots remaining for Winterfest. If you know somebody that wants to go, we still have 13 spots. Now's the time to decide. And we need you to sign up 13 spots for February the 16th to the 18th in Gallenberg. Okay, how many of you are already signed up? Raise your hand. Make some noise. Who else is going? All right, all right. Hey, we, we want you to go. We want you to go. And if there is a reason that you're not going and you feel comfortable sharing that with us, let us know. We'll do whatever we can to get you there. We want you to be there. Okay, all right, we got a, we got a few minutes, so we'll do this. We, we need to laugh a little bit. I brought everybody down. Maybe not down, but I just kind of, we need to raise the bar a little bit. Can we do that? Uh, let's do this. Let's take a few moments. To, oh, wait, what's that doing there? I don't know. I didn't, okay, I'm sorry. I, oh. I have no idea how these things keep getting hijacked, these pictures. Who, who keeps putting the pictures of me? Now, wait a minute. We're, we're booing my granddaughter? Is that oh, what's happening? Oh, no. I, no, they weren't saying woo. I have access. I have access to the Winterfest sign-up sheet. I can delete. There we go. All right, all right. I have no idea how they got there. Let's look at some real picks of the week. Here we go. All right, our picks of the week. Oh, I'm already feeling bad about this one. Oh no. I'm sorry. Oh my. Uh, the first one is uh, I laughed a little bit harder than I should have. There's two of them. Here we go. I laughed harder than I should have. Watch out. You're chopping. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Help you get him. Okay. That guy was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Hey, how many of you have, uh, who's got AirPods? How many of you have lost your AirPods at least once? Okay. I'm not going to ask you who has AirPods in right now is not listening to anything that we're saying, but um, yeah, there we go. But check this out. Check this out. Wow, this is bad news. I'm not sure I'd ever wear it again. <laughs> Don't worry, in about 24 hours, you're going to get that AirPod back. You'll have that AirPod. That's, that's crazy. That's wild. <laughs> Parker said, that's wild. That's pretty impressive. We it still works. We need a new works. segment where Parker just says, that's wild. That's, that's wild. Hey, I'm going to issue an apology right now. I'm really sorry about the next one. I'm really sorry about this one. Nope. Nope. I'm really sorry. If you need to avert your eyes, you can. And somebody can tell you about it later. Consider yourself warned. What? Here we go. I can't. Hey, wait, 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 wait. I'm curious. I'm curious. I'm, I'm dying to know. Who did not watch it? You did not watch it. Did you explain to her what you what we just saw? Oh, who does? Oh, you have a phobia of throw up. I mean, well, I mean, nobody loves it. Okay. How many of you are already feeling a little sick at your stomach right now? I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine. I don't want to think about it anymore. Let's move on. Let's move on. All right. It's been a while since we've asked this question. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Do you have the guts? Speaking, of, speaking of, of speaking of guts. One, yeah. Just, <laughs> good, good segue, <laughs> Parker. I've like been it. I've thought of that all day. To, Parker's like uh, speaking of guts. <laughs> the sentence you don't hear very often. Here you go. Check this out. I think I would do this. I think I would do this. I think I would try this. Oh, oh. Yeah, I'd try it. Who would do it? Okay. All right, here we go. Here's another one. Nah, not so good. This is not so good. Oh! Uh, bowling, soccer with a bowling ball, oh! barefoot on Lego. Oh! Hey, you know the most amazing thing about that clip? 
What? Guys, truly, let me tell you, the most amazing thing about that clip is that I listened to it carefully before I showed it. And there's not one Shiloh word that is said. Nobody says a Shiloh word. That's a you know, word that you probably shouldn't say. I don't know that I could do that because Whoa. the only thing that has really tested my language in 52 years of existence is walking into a playroom barefoot with my girl's Legos on the floor. Um, and that's the only thing that will make me want to say words that probably shouldn't be said. There you go. You ever, you have Legos in your house? We just started this Christmas with oh. Legos. I've stepped on one already. Yeah, watch out. Can you imagine playing bowling ball soccer? At what, at what point do you have to, to be at to come up with that game? I don't know. That's I have no idea. All right, we're going to rate this in. Rate this in. Here we go. Send Check it. it out. We've only got one. Here's the sin. Oh, he's juggling. That's a quality sin right there. That's a quality sin. All right. Okay. Uh, it's been a while since we've done this segment. Here we go. That's amazing. I forgot what these are. I forgot what these clips are. Oh, yeah. Okay, I remember now. This is pretty impressive. This is pretty impressive. I get scared for this man just watching. Who here legitimately thinks they could pull that off? All right. Oh, Angelo nope. and, and, and Alex, can you pull? Okay. Now, what if, how, how wide do you think that board is? Four, four, four feet, four or five feet, maybe? Oh. I mean, no, wide. Four, four feet. Oh, oh. Yeah, uh, yeah it's probably. Like, I thought you meant between each. Maybe like four inches. I don't know. So this is even more amazing, y'all. Here we go. He's going to progressively ride on surfaces that are thinner. There's a slack line. What's thinner than a slack line? A handrail. Okay, what's next? I don't even know that I believe that. I don't even know that I believe that. There you go. Okay. All right. Here we go. Something that escalated quickly. All right. Here we go. This. I did not see this coming. I did not see this coming. Yeah. I'm already impressed. This is the way. Here we go. That escalated quickly. That did. That, that's amazing. All right, Alex, Zach, yes. we need you to stand up. Here is your mission if you choose to accept it. It's time for Mission Possible with Zach and Alex. All right, first of all, name a candy that you all like that you'd like to be on the line for this next challenge. Quickly, quickly, for the whole youth group. <laughs> Gotta go fast, we'll make up one for you. Twix. Twix bars, okay. All right, here we go. Watch it carefully, we'll send you the video. Check it out. <laughs> All right, there. <laughs> Alex is way too excited, Zach's like, no, nope. All right, there you go. That is your challenge, Mission uh, Possible with Zach and Alex. All right, you guys have a seat. Who thinks they can pull it off? I think they can. You guys get to work on that. Hey, we have something that is a really big deal. Wow. Best one ever. Best that was the one. best one ever. Very In the good. whole history of the, our youth group, that was the best job ever. I commend you. Hey, big deal, everybody. And I believe she's sitting right over there. We have a member of the Thousand oh. Career Point Club, yeah. AC, Anna Clay. A thousand points. Uh, there it is. And, and uh, she's got two, two and a half more years to play. <laughs> two and a half more years to play. Uh, Ellie, so, uh, I mean, Ellie, I'm sorry, Anna Clay, sorry. I did it. I did it. Me too. Anna oh. Clay, here's what I understand happened. You went to a game as a child and saw somebody enter the Thousand Point Club 
and you told somebody in your family, that's going to be me. Is that kind of the way that went down? Who did you, who'd you say that to? Okay. And you're like, I want to do, that's what I want to do right there. Okay. Um, pretty impressive. And, uh, did this start, I know you started playing as an eighth grader on the varsity team. Uh, and this is in, in th- two and a half seasons, you've accomplished this. That's pretty awesome. Big hand for AC. Good job. Good job, AC. That's exciting. Okay. All right. Hey, let's, uh, let's skip the next thing. Let's go straight to our slide about our meeting. We're going to, uh, we'll come back to, to that next week. But let's go right back to our slide for our meeting. Everybody, this is going to now happen this Sunday, okay? Have some fun pictures to show you. Our, our, thank you. Our informational meeting for our Mexico trip is going to be Sunday, January the 28th, 4.30 to 6. It is a mandatory meeting in the sense as much as we can make it. First priority is given to people who are at this meeting. I'll let you know if there's space issues, first priority goes to people who come to this meeting uh, from 4.30 to 6. And we're going to talk about what's ha- involved in the trip. You have to have completed the 10th grade by the time the trip happens in the summer. So current 10th graders, 11th graders, and 12th graders. In the event that there's not enough people, then it may be spots available for some of those that have finished the ninth grade, but that's not happened in the last several years and not likely to happen this year. If you got it, say got it. Yes. I want to tell you one of the coolest things that happened while we were there. There, was, there are several students that have been taking a photography class. This picture was taken by Yoleth, one of the students. She's actually a college-age student, so we can show her a picture. And she took this photograph of the ocean there near Ensenada. And we all went in to see uh, some of their art on display. This is one of the guys that sponsors Yoleth, and here's the picture. And he was like, man, I would love to have a copy of that picture. And one of our leaders said, well, how much would you pay for it? And he said, oh, I don't know. I'd, somebody else said, I'll give you 50 bucks for it. Well, then they started bidding. Jason Gent is an auctioneer by trade, and so he started an auction. And they began to auction off all of the pictures of these kids, uh, which they would then sign a limited edition one out of one, because there's only one of these pictures. Here's a video $20, of this moment. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, would you give 20, now 30, 30, now 40, now 40, now 40, now 40, now 40, would you give 40, now 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 uh, all in all, in about the 10 pictures, they made over $3,600 for the home because somebody had a joke and thought, I would try to auction off this picture, and everybody kept trying to outbid each other. And watching these kids who took these pictures see their art sell for three and $400 was really, really, really a cool thing. So uh, there we go. So there's that meeting coming up on Sunday. If you have questions, you can talk to us afterwards. Guys, we're going to skip to the Renew video. If you'll take us straight to that. We're going to get ready to transition to sing. Singers, if you guys will come and take your place and get ready. And uh, let's just click right over and remind ourselves of something we're doing in 2024. Play that little clip there. There we go. Let's watch this together. You all know that in 2024, we are challenging the NBYG, your parents, family, siblings, to be renewed by reading the New Testament in 2024. And... Uh, To do that, we have uh, printed up some bookmarks that you actually have in your seats. If you don't need one of those, leave it there. We'll collect them. There's some on the tables for those of you that want them. If you need an extra one, grab one. But one per person, or if you want to take one to a family member, that would be great. All right, Parker, you have are we've already started reading this week. We're supposed to have read Mark 1 through 5, 6 through 10, and this week we're on 11 uh, through 16. All right. Um, I don't want to put you all on the spot. But uh, you guys been reading? Okay. Yes. So real quick, Parker, give us a, a, a 30 second insight. What have you learned by spending time in the Gospel of Mark over the past couple of weeks? Well, uh, one thing, I like action movies. Um, and if there was ever a action movie or, or highlight film of Jesus, it would be Mark. Uh, there's a lot of action you talked about in the, uh, your Instagram video about at once or immediately. There's a lot of stuff happening. 
Um, so that's been really fun to read Mark consecutively through. Um, and, and so, yeah, I've, it surprised me um, how much you can read in a short amount of time. So You read the first week's reading, chapters 1 through 5, you said in 12 minutes. Yes. And that was, and you said you were, you know, conservatively, you know, regular pace reader. Yeah, I wouldn't say I'm a super fast reader, yeah. so for those of you out there, it might give you some hope. So if anybody says, wait a minute, we missed last week because of snow, we're already two weeks in, we're in the third week, I'm already behind, it's not going to take you more than 36 minutes. I guarantee you that some of you spent 36 minutes on a phone or looking at a screen, watching a movie, listening to music playing a video game, you can spend 36 minutes in, uh, in Mark. Courtney, you spent some time in Mark this, this month? Yes, I did. All right, what's one takeaway that you got? I love just going, going back through and like, every time you read, you know, the Bible's living. So every time you read, you're gathering something new. And there were several things that I was just like, I forgot this was in there. And I just, I don't know, it's just part of the story that you just get to put little pieces back together that you've kind of forgotten about. I spent some time in a D group going through one of my favorite stories from Mark, the second chapter, uh, and just I loved reading it again. And I found some things new that even after years of reading it, I haven't seen. Guys, you can do this. You can do this. And if you say, I can't do it or I'm not going to do it, then there's not a lot that we can say right here that's going to take your life in a positive direction. I don't want to guilt you for not doing it. I'm just going to beg you and implore you and invite you to spend some time in God's Word. This bookmark will help you. This week, we're on Mark 11 through 16. I'm not going to ask every week, but I will ask this week, how many of you have at least started? You've read one chapter of the New Testament in 2024, if you, if you started. That's a great start. And all we're going to ask is that you can read, that you can listen to it. You can listen to it on the Bible, uh, Bible app. Um, just jump in, and here's your bookmark. Now you'll know, and you can put that in a locker. You can take a picture of it, make copies, take other bookmarks, invite friends along for it. We want you to renew yourself by reading the New Testament in 2024. This week... Mark 11 through 16, we're finishing up Mark, and then we go into Ephesians. And just so you know, we're not reading it in order, of course, obviously. We're trying to spread the Gospels out and read other parts. So, there you go. All right, if you got it, say got it. Hey, we're going to spend a few minutes singing together. We had a lot of stuff to, to cover tonight. You've been very patient, but we want to be able to worship together. So let's all stand up together uh, and know that your prayer requests are being prayed over in that room right over there by Miss Sharon. We're going to sing a few songs together tonight. And then we'll um, continue on with our series. Let's sing together.
going to be our last one. This is our last one. I need, uh, I need one more song. Let's sing it out. How great the song. Let's be seated. We want to welcome those who are joining us online and who may have uh, skipped ahead to, uh, to this portion. We'd love for you to go back and Check out more of what's happened tonight. Lots of things have been talked about, prayed about. Um, and let's, um, let's, we're going to recap just a little bit where we were last week. But, um, you know, I've talked to at least three people already this, this week since Monday. Some even tonight. And it's been a pretty challenging week for some of us. Um, yeah, I rejoice that my friend Randy is not suffering. I rejoice that he has his reward. It's with a little, you know, kind of uh, godly envy that uh, I'm, you know, I'm like, wow, you know, he gets to be where all of us want to be. But it's been tough. Some of you I know are having struggles with choices made by friends and struggles that your friends are having. It's difficult. It's tough. Some of you have dealt with loss, or maybe some of you dealt with maybe the, 
the, the possibility or the threat of loss. Some of you have dealt with maybe disappointment or maybe some anger or some betrayal. And uh, for some of you, it was really difficult to be here. Um, I'm never going to put anybody on the spot, but it's always courageous to me when somebody shows up here and they tell me, I've had a really tough week. Because it would be so easy to say, I've had a tough week, therefore I'm, not, I'm going to stay away from those people because I don't want to laugh or I don't want to be tempted to, you know, I, I don't want something to distract me from, you know, the, the pain that I'm feeling or there's nothing that can happen there that'll make me feel better. And um, some of you know who you are. It's, uh, it's courageous to me that you're here when, when, when it's tough. My guess is there's a lot of you that are here that I don't know are here even though that it's tough. But, you know... I mean, it is, um, Mike and I are always sending each other, you know, videos and probably the common theme, Mike, and the, the, you know, the reels that we'll send back and forth, maybe, hey, would this one work for a segment at True North? But the ones that we just send each other, not really to show here, not that they're not appropriate to show here, but we're just like, these are things that we share. There's probably one common theme. I'm not going to put Mike on the spot to guess, but Mike, my guess is that there's one common theme through our reels. It's always about what life was like when we were the age of the people in this room. You know, Michael sent me sounds from the 80s, and I'm like, oh my goodness, I haven't heard that sound. I haven't thought about that toy, or I haven't seen that clip in so long. And, and Mike, just the way you guys are going to be doing in 20 years, you'll be sending videos and clips to each other. It's going to be hilarious, the things that are so important to you now that you'll laugh about then. But, but the reason I love those videos, when Mike sends them to me, they're nostalgic and it's fun and it's funny and I laugh and we talk about them. I'm like, oh, I had totally forgotten about that toy or I'd forgotten about that video game. But the reason I like it is because it just takes me back to a time when life really seemed to be a little simpler. But honestly, if I were to go back to that time, which is the time where you are now, life wasn't that simple. Now, life was a little simpler for me because I didn't have this. And you say, how did you ever survive without that? I honestly don't know. I don't mean my, my mom and dad hardly ever knew where I was I would drive one place and I would always be faithful to call them and let them know. I'd have to go to a landline attached to somebody's wall. It was normally an avocado green or mustard yellow phone. And I would call them and dial them up and say, hey, mom, I'm here. I'm okay. And I'll see you in a bit. I'll call before I leave. And then I would go home and life was, you know, just seemed simpler. But I, I, I struggle with the same things that many of you do. They just weren't so readily available. They weren't right there all the time in front of me. And as I'm watching things that I see online or stories I see, it's really, really tough. It's really tough to be the age that, that you all are. I'm not, it's not like your life is, you know, totally down or negative. Most of you love life, but some of you are loving life despite so many challenges. And every week when I come here, my heart is just opened up because I'm like, man, it's really, it, it's really tough to be you. And yet you're here and you're worshiping and I'm watching you worship. I love the, the front row seat, as I often say, right here to really to get to, I, I mean, it's, it's not that I like leading worship. I just like standing here and watching you. Many of you lead me in worship. There's times when I don't want to sing. I don't want to lead a song. I don't feel the words to the song. I don't, I mean, I don't, it's not that I no longer believe them. I'm just not ready to sing them until I see you singing them. And tonight has been a, it's been a tough week for me. And today was really tough with all kinds of things happening. And yet, Man, some of you really, really were a great blessing to me tonight. Despite whatever's going on in, in your world, it's tough. And that's why we want to renew you through the New Testament. I just wish somebody, I wish one person, maybe one person on each row. No, I just wish maybe the person, you and the two people beside you. That's what I wish. <laughs> if you and the two people beside you would just, if there's people on the other side of you, would just do this. I mean... Were you as impressed by the three students that were up here earlier as I was? Like, were you like, what, what's, the, what's up with them? Like what, like, what did they eat before they came in here? Like, I want a little bit of that. Um, I don't think it was, it wasn't an act. It, it wasn't being fake. That some, something has gotten a hold of those three. And, and, I, and I see the same thing getting a hold of some of you. And I'm telling you, if you renew yourself and you spend time in God's Word that's going to be you. It already is some of you, but that's going to be you. And, and nobody's going to be able to silence you. If people make fun of you for your passion, it's not going to matter to you. If they say, I can't believe you gave up a week and you went to Winterfest, or you gave up a week and went to the fall retreat, or you, you, you mean you gave toys to kids, like from our community? 
kids that probably didn't even know how to say thank you and you, you gave up a whole week at Christmas to do that, you're not going to care because you're like, hey, that's just who I am. And uh, so tonight, I want us to revisit this idea of what it means to be, to, to renew, to be renewed. And we spent some time, I'm not going to really review, but remember two weeks ago, we talked about the hashtag classic stories made modern, like great tech expectations, a midsummer night's meme and sense and oversensitivity. I'm not going to show all of them, but just taking an old story and trying to put it into a modern context. And we had some fun with that. Some of you sent me some and they were great. But how do we take a classic, how do we take this book and how do we make it relevant? How do we make this book relevant? I, I've told the story before, and I'm not going to tell the entire story now, but I've told the story before of, of years ago. This happened about three, four years ago, um, and we are at a D group, and we were sitting at, at, at a restaurant, and we had the Bible uh, open, and we were studying it, and I invited a stranger to come and sit with us, a guy that worked there at Bojangles. I invited him to come over and sit with us. And he did something that completely rocked my whole wide world. His name was Tony. And the reason I invited him over is because nobody at the table was listening to anything that I had to say. I mean, I think the world, a hole could have swallowed me into the ground and nobody at the table would have noticed I was gone, I think. And I was like, guys, let's get focused. Guys, come on, let's focus. Guys, come on, come on. And nobody was paying attention. So I finally said, hey, Tony. I actually said, hey, Tony. I said, hey, you, what's your name? And he was like, me? And he said, yeah, Tony. And I invited Tony to come over. Tony is an African-American gentleman. He was about my age or maybe a little, little younger, actually, but, but, but older. And he came over and he uh, sat at our table and he, he obviously worked at Bojangles. He had on an apron. And, and I said, Tony, what's the most interesting thing about you? And all the guys got real quiet. They're like, you can't talk to a complete stranger. You invited a complete stranger to our table. You can't do that. And I was like, well, guys, you guys go and keep ignoring me. You were doing a great job of it before. I'll just talk to Tony. And but all the guys were listening, and Tony, I, th I know I've shared this with you before, maybe here, but Tony said the most interesting thing about him was that he played football for MTSU. And I said, cool, what was your biggest moment? He said, well, I once intercepted a, a ball um, and ran it uh, 98 yards the wrong direction for a safety and made national television. And I was like, and the guys were like, oh my goodness, that's, that's terrible. That's hilarious, but it's terrible. And then Tony said, you really want to know what the most interesting thing about me is? And I said, uh, well, sure. And it got really serious. I want you to listen. I want you to lo lock into this because, I mean, I've done ministry for a long time. I've lived a long time. And this, this is one of those things that imprinted on my heart. Tony said, um, when I was uh, not, not long ago, not, not that long ago, uh, he said, um, but when I was a teenager, he said, my sister was killed by a drunk driver. And he said, and I gave up on God because I thought if God's going to allow that to happen, I'm giving up on him. If he gave up on me, I'm giving up on him. I guarantee you, everybody in the room knows somebody that has that same attitude. And my guess is there's somebody even sitting in here that has the same, the same temptations. And you need to know you're in the right place. You need to know that it's totally natural to feel that. The one speaking to you has felt that and is probably going to feel it at some other time in my life. That's why we come here, to be reminded that we, you know, we got each other. But he said, and I, and I walked away from God. And he said, I was away from God for a long, long time. He said, until I noticed that um, about three months ago, he said, I noticed a group of guys sitting here with this book open and talking about it and quiet and focused. And I was like, what night was that, Tony? I don't remember that night. And he said, everybody was talking about it. And he said, and for three, three months ago, I noticed they were sitting there. And he said, there's a group of guys that are all the same age as I was when my sister was killed by a drunk driver. And I just watched because I thought, wait a minute, those guys, they must believe something in that book that I've forgotten about. They must really believe it because uh, I gave, I closed it up. He said, I, I wanted nothing to do with this book until I saw a bunch of guys that were the age I was when I quit believing and walked away from God. And they're like, what, what have they seen that I haven't seen? And I'd seen Tony sitting over there for the past several months. For three months, he had sat there at a table for about 30 minutes. He'd come out with flour all over his uh, apron. And he would sit down with his hat turned around backwards and he'd be on his phone. And he said, and about three months ago, I asked my manager if I could take my break from 7.30 to 8 so that I could sit there and just listen to what, what, what you guys were saying because I thought there's something that they get about this that I haven't yet gotten. 
And he said, and so I listened for 30 minutes every week. And I realized he'd been sitting there. And I said, I thought you were on your phone. He said, I was just holding my phone, but I was never on my phone. I was listening to what you guys were saying because I wanted to know what is it, what, what, what had I missed? And Tony sat there and talked to us. And it was just an incredible moment where I realized that one, we were being watched. Not, we were not doing what we did to be seen, but we were being watched. Does that make sense? And I thought, Tony... Um, you know, these guys, are, are, they're all dealing with struggles just like you did. There's some of them that aren't sure they believe. And there are some of them that are tempted to walk away, including the ones sitting here trying to lead them. And, and I just thought, it, it, you know, it makes a difference. And it made a difference for Tony. You know, I still see Tony. The guys that I meet with now, they don't know Tony all that well. Tony has, is still there and he's still busy in the back and he comes out and joins us every now and then. But for Tony, it was like, these guys made this classic story they made it modern. Like it, it must mean something in 2000 and at the time it was like 2019 or so when this happened. He's like, it means something. And, and so we spent some time in the book of Colossians a couple of weeks ago. You've been reading the book of Mark. You're about to read Ephesians. And some of you are going to be tempted to say, this is old news. This is all old history. And so we looked at this passage, and I see Sam in the back. Sam was here. Sam brought his golf bag. You guys remember two weeks ago? And in the golf bag, he had one club. Well, he had lots of clubs. But I asked him a question. Sam, could you golf 18 holes with just one club? And Sam said, I, I mean, if I had to, I could. But remember all the things that he said would change about the game? You guys remember that long list we made? If you weren't here, it'd be really um, uh, in your best interest to go back and log in and look at that list that we generated. You, some of you generated it over a course of me talking to some people asking, what would it be like? The game would be less fun. You get way more frustrated. And as I listened to that list, I thought, that's what it's got to feel like to try to be a teenager and to just, to just try to, to, to not have all of the clubs that are found in the pages of this book, to not be equipped with those. If you say, well, what is the one club? I don't mean you just have, I'm not trying to name the one club. I'm just saying you, you don't have any tools. You just got either no clubs. He certainly couldn't golf 18 holes with no clubs, but he could maybe get by with one. But I'm like, this book is going to give you all of these clubs so that when you have a friend who's in need, you're like, I know what to do here. When you have your parents that aren't getting along and you're trying to pray for them, I know what to pray for. When you have somebody and you're trying to deal with a breakup, you're like, I know how to respond to this in a way that's godly. When your boyfriend or girlfriend is putting temptations in front of you, you're like, I know how to respond here. When the language around your lunch table is not, you go, I know what to do. I got a club for that. When you're with somebody and you're like, you know what? Whenever I'm with this person, they take me further and further away from who I'm supposed to be. You got a club for that. You're ready to go. And if you watch Sam or anybody that golfs, golf, you watch them look, survey where they're going. They look at the hole. They look where the ball is. They look and they realize, okay, I know which club to go and get. But if you've only got one club... You're like, I, you know, there's no way I can make this with this club. I'm stuck with this club. And some of you are trying to get through life. The reason you're angry, the reason you're frustrated, the reason you're full of doubts, it's not because there's something wrong with you. It's because you got a golf bag that's got no clubs in it. It's not that somebody made you wrong. It's not that there's something fundamentally messed up about you. It's that you don't have all the, all the tools that you need. And so we looked at them. They're all right here. And so... I'm going to give you a this is like that, and then I want you to hear from a couple of students here in just a second that help illustrate this. So I'm always looking for ways that help illustrate some truth that I don't know how to understand. You guys know we've done this before, and we use this phrase all the time here because Jesus used it. Jesus would say things like, the kingdom of God is like, or he would say, in the same way, and then he explains some truth. So I'm going to take something that you all probably experience every week, many of you, and I'm going to try to connect it. I don't know that I can, but maybe, maybe you'll follow this. So I'm watching a YouTube video recently, and the YouTube video I was watching, I'm not uh, too ashamed of my nerdiness. I was watching a recap of Loki season two. Anybody here seen Loki? Anybody watch Loki? Anybody seen season one and two of Loki? Anybody watch season two of Loki and wonder if there has to be a person who is a believer that had anything to do with writing the script for that? Because to me, there were some obvious moments where somebody was trying to take what appeared to me to be the gospel story and weave it in. I could be wrong. I could be seeing it through the wrong filter. But I just thought this is somebody who really has some connection to what's in here because there's a whole lot of this story that appeared in the last season. So I'm watching this YouTube video, okay? Loki season two, Easter eggs we missed the first time. 
How many of you have ever watched an Easter egg uh, video or some sort of synopsis of a TV show, right? Let's don't be afraid to admit it. And you go online and you're like, I want to get a breakdown of a trailer. You guys are watching breakdowns of trailers. You know the way I broke down a trailer when I was in, true story, in the sixth grade, I went to my friend Jeff Elliott's house with a cassette recorder I got at Radio Shack, and we waited and waited and waited until the Return of the Jedi trailer came on, and we hit record as soon as it came on, and we recorded it by holding it up to the TV. This sounds so geeky as I'm saying it. And then we recorded it, and then we stopped it, and then we went back and we played it over and over, and we kind of got all the, we couldn't get online to watch it. We didn't have a VCR to record it. We just had an audio recording. We're like, what is that? I wonder what that guy does. I wonder what that means. Who's that guy? What were what they shooting at? What kind of spaceship is that? And we broke that trailer down. Now, the minute a trailer airs, I can get online and, and watch a trailer breakdown. But you guys have done this, right? Now, here's what I'm doing. I'm watching this video trying to pick, pick, pick out some of the Easter eggs that I missed. And then I put my cursor down here at the bottom. Okay, you guys see now the cursor there at the bottom? And you guys see, what, why does it look like mountains there? Somebody tell me, what's going on there? Why does it look like a, a mountain? Uh, yeah, say it again. Okay, replay, what do you mean? Explain it. Yeah, okay, very good. As I'm moving my cursor around, I get down here to detail number eight. I don't remember what it was, but you see the spike right there, and it says that five minutes and 47 seconds, this is the most replayed part of this whole thing. Everybody with me so far? If you're with me, say I got it. And as I'm watching it, I'm like, well, I got to see what that's about. So I scroll through there and I'm like, I'll watch that. I don't have time to watch 10 minutes of this. I got things to do. I got retreat stuff to plan and Winterfest things. And I got stuff to do. I got to like pray for y'all and stuff. So I'm like, I don't have time to watch all this. Um, and I still haven't finished this video, not because I was praying for y'all. I did that, but other things as well. And then I get to this video and I'm like, okay, five minutes. In now I'm watching this and I'm thinking, okay, let's imagine if I had 2023, skids 2023. And let's imagine if we got Eli's 2023 and we're going to scroll through. And I just would like for you to imagine where, where do you think those spikes would be? What's, what's the most replayed moment of your, of last year for you? You say, I don't know what you mean. Somebody, this is where I need you to help us. We got, we only got a handful of time and, um, I want to get, I want to end with a testimony here in just a second. But what do I mean by what is your most replayed moment? It can mean a multitude of things. Let's come up with four answers. So four people, raise your hand. I'll repeat it for those watching online. What, what might it mean in your life to have a replayed moment? Did I see a hand over here? Okay, nope. Somebody give me, somebody give me one. Help me out. Yes, Angelo. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so you want to watch that moment over and over because it was an exciting moment. Okay, I'm speaking generally, not specific here. So you find a moment of 2023 that was so awesome that you just want to keep replaying it in your mind. And you're like, man, I want to go back and just think about that moment over and over and over and keep watching. Okay, very good. Somebody else, what's another reason that you might go and have a replayed moment in your, in your life? Okay, yes. I'm not talking about a specific moment. I'm talking about, but why, why was that a moment you'd want to replay? Because it was awesome. Okay, so you had a moment that you experienced and you said, I want to go back. We just covered that with his, right? An, an experienced moment that I could go back and replay over and over and over again. Okay, very good. All right, I'm glad out of 16 years you had that moment. Yes. When I connected my impact morning call to connection. Okay, all right, all right, very good. I, maybe I'm asking the question the wrong way. I don't mean a specific moment. Why would it be a moment you would go back and watch over and over again? Yes, Anastasia. Okay, it's either a time you want to go back and relive, or it's a time you wish you could go back and change. That's another reason. Give me another one. What's another one? We'll just go with one more because apparently I don't know how to ask questions. Yes. Like what other a certain moment other people think about you? Okay. I want to go back and watch this moment because this was a defining moment about the way other people thought about me. Could I have done this differently? What should I have done? I want to go back and watch it. I just want you to think about your whole 2023 and think about those replayed moments. Like what is a moment? Maybe it was a decision you made. You're like, I knew I shouldn't have done that. And you can't stop thinking about it. Hey, for some of you, your most replayed moment, you know what it is? It's that thing that somebody said to you that you can't let go of. And you just keep replaying it over and over and over in your head. And that's your most replayed moment. For some of you, it's a moment that you just can't stop being thankful for. You're like, my 2023 would be, would be 
so bad had it not been for this moment that pulled me up out of this, this, the depths of despair. All right. I want you to meet, uh, not meet, but I want you to see two of our students. I want to call up Kate and Edie. Come on up a second. I want to think about a moment that, um, let's grab that mic over there, Kate. If you can grab that mic over there, and you all share that mic. I want us to end tonight by thinking about what I'm just going to call detail number eight. I don't know what it is. I don't remember what detail number eight in the Loki. I have no idea. I've never finished this video. I just took screenshots of it because I thought this is a way to illustrate. You had a moment when we did this, uh, this series. The first part of Colossians says, devote yourselves to prayer. So this is the first club. Now listen carefully. I know some of you already kind of tuned out. Some of you are like, I don't, I don't understand this. Um, that's okay. Just try to get through life without this club. You, you, you can't. You can either trust me or you, you can not trust me. I, I, you know, I don't need to be right. I have no desire to be right. I just know that not because I'm right. I know this is true because I believe this. The, the club you need is to devote yourselves to prayer. And he says, being watchful and thankful. This word for devoted means great effort steadily applied. It's not my definition. It's a Greek word that means great effort steadily applied. And he says, I want you to be devoted in prayer, being watchful and thankful. Because 32 times in all of Paul's letters, he talks about gratitude. 32 times. That's, that's, a most, that's a replayed moment, guys. That's a most replayed moment is just gratitude in your life. Okay. And then he says, um, and, uh, and, and pray for us. Now, we finished this series that took a long time last semester, the series on Nehemiah. And it took a long time because it was a lot to talk about in it. And we talked about, we had these bricks, but some of you still have your bricks. Come and get them. I had a conversation with a student who said, hey, I just want you to know that I know we got that stack of bricks and you may have felt like that was like, you know, maybe you, you don't know how that went, but I called a friend that was going through some stuff and they were really struggling and I did not know what to say to them, but I just got my brick and I just started turning that brick over and reading everything on that brick and talking to them. And they were like, man, that is so helpful. Where, where, are, you, where are you getting this information? And they're like, we're talking about this every Wednesday night. From this conversation, you all came up at the very beginning of that series because we talked about in the series on Nehemiah that when Nehemiah had something that was breaking his heart, he knew that it broke the heart of God. We said there are the three things that you're supposed to do. You're supposed to sit down and, and weep, which all of us know what that's like. He knelt and he prayed, and then he stood up and he got to work. So you, Kate, came to me and said, hey, can Edie and I talk to you? Just give us a quick recap of that conversation back then, back in the last semester. So back in, I don't know what month it was, but um, we came and talked to Skid, and like we had already decided that we were going to pray for four months, but we kind of filled Skid in on the situation and just some heavy things in senior year that were kind of weighing on us. And so we just kind of said, hey, we're like committing to these four months of prayer like Nehemiah. Um, it was actually Edie's idea. Um, she wasn't even here the night that Skid presented that to us. But she said, hey, why don't we just commit? And I was like, okay. So we committed and yeah. So Edie, four months from that night, do you remember the date that you wrote down? You guys actually told me a date. You said, here's the four month mark. Yeah, our date was uh, January 4th. So right. that would have been October. September. I don't know how to do math. Yeah, it was sometime September in yeah, 4th August, September. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, so you wrote down January 4th mm -hmm. and you said, we're, we're just going to, we're just going to pray and we're going to wait. We're, we're, I mean, if something happens before then great, but we we are committing to four months. If Nehemiah did it, we're going to do it. Yep. Um, and I know of two other students in here that told me the same thing, that they, they did the same kind of challenge, picked a date very similar because it was around the same time. So you had four months. Now, uh, January 4th was just, uh, that was uh, 20 days ago. Really hard to believe that January 4th was 20 days ago, almost a month ago. Yeah. And we were supposed to talk about it the first True North, but then we didn't have time to, and then we got snowed out, so now we're here. So you now you had two weeks to reflect on it. Four months and almost five months later, you guys prayed about some, some specific things that were burdening your heart because they broke the heart of God. And I just said, I don't even really know the answer to this exactly, but I just said, would you all give us a quick report? Tell us what you experienced over four months. Yeah, I would say um, the situation, definitely I've seen God's hand in that. And I think that the biggest change has been in my heart. And I think Kate agrees, like in our hearts is where the biggest changes come from. Because 
having that um, routine of praying for the same thing every day, it's the, the word you had up earlier where it said dedicated, like you're steadily applying that pressure and it, it's, it might not feel like a lot of progress at first, but working towards that and just having that on your mind every night or day or whatever is really impactful. Um, I definitely noticed um, a complete change in the way that I was viewing um, all the situations we were playing, praying for. I became a lot more grateful and joyful, and I could definitely see God basically everywhere in that situation, um, and that was incredible. Um, I would say the biggest thing I learned is when you're praying in alignment with God's word, it completely changes your heart to be more like Christ. Yeah, now notice what she says. No focus on the thing you were praying about changing. I mean, you said you saw some changes, but, that, but you said, she just said, the biggest change I saw was in your own heart. Mm-hmm. Um, guys, you need to know this prayer sometimes changes things. Sometimes it will change things, but it will always change you. Prayer sometimes changes things, but it will always change you. Kate, I want to give you a word. What did you notice that is maybe the same or different than what Edie saw? So as I've been reflecting on this the past couple weeks, one of the biggest things I've been thinking about, I think four months is probably the longest time I've ever committed to anything. I mean, like in the past, I've done a word of the year and other similar things, but nothing that's required like a four month daily commitment. And so I think one thing I was thinking about is like, wow, like when I'm um, showing myself, like showing the Lord that I'm committing every day, I think one of the biggest things I noticed was like seeing that faithfulness from the Lord in my own life. I, I know it was there the whole time, but just the ways that I've been able to pick up on that have been even more special. And I've actually started a five year prayer journal. And so there's um, five like paragraph spots on every page of the journal. And so you fill out one page for every day. And so obviously I'm just in the first year right now. I'm only a couple weeks in because I started on January 1st, but starting January 1st of 2025, I'll be able to each day read, th- read back through what I was praying for this time last year. And so I think that's really special. And just, I'm excited, um, like just seeing the way the Lord worked over those, that four month period of time, I think it's going to be even more special through the next five years. I, I was just so blessed to say, hey, it's January 4th, like uh, you got a report. And they both said over and over, you know, yes, the thing we prayed about changed. But that, that just became something, that just became a, a, a dessert. The main course was it changed us. It changed the way we saw the situation. It changed the people, our attitude towards the people we were praying for. It changed our attitude towards prayer itself. So uh, a 45 second story while you all stay right here. A story that's made up, but sounds very much like your story. A guy goes to God and he says, God, you got anything that you need me to do? And God says, yes, I need you to go out in the back of this field and I want you to find this rock and I want you to push against this rock. And the guy says, yes, Lord, the sin, right? I'm sent. He went out and starts pushing the rock and he starts pushing that rock and he can't get it to go anywhere. And he thinks maybe I should get other people. God says, no, 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 I need you to push the rock. So he pushes the rock and he pushes it. He pushes it. He gets worn out. So he goes home. He tries the next day, pushes and pushes. And he thinks I know enough about pushing a rock that if I keep pushing this rock, eventually it's probably going to budge. So he tries it a couple of days, a couple of weeks, weeks turn into months. He's pushing this rock and he's worn out. Now he's getting frustrated. And he goes back and he says, God, I've been pushing this rock and nothing is happening. God says, I need you to push the rock. He goes and he keeps pushing. He keeps pushing. Six months go by, a year goes by, and he finally says, God, he walks up and says, God, I can't do this. Nothing has happened. And God says, yes. He says, God, I cannot do what you asked me to do. I couldn't do it. He goes, what do you mean you can't do it? You are doing it. You have been doing it. You've done it. He says, what do you mean? He says, go look. And he says, "There's no, the rock is still there. God says, I didn't ask you to move the rock. I asked you to push the rock. Like, God, why would you ask me to push a rock that wasn't going to move? And he says, because I don't need that rock to move. I need something bigger to move. And I needed you to be strong and ready for when that moment came. And so now that you've pushed against this rock for a whole year, now you have all the muscles you're going to need to move this bigger thing that I'm going to need you to do. And guys, that's what happened to these two girls. Is they said, we see something that we cannot move. And God said, I just need you to push it. And just push on this rock. And like, God, the rock's not moving. He says, I didn't ask you to move it. I just asked you to push the rock. And then you say, God, I, nothing's changing. And he's like, ah, I don't know about that. Edie, you're more thankful. Kate, you're more patient. Edie, you're nicer to the people that are difficult and challenging. Kate, you're more aware of the situations around you. 
Edie, you're more aware of people that are pushing against things that they, that they can't control, and you, you see them more. Kate, you realize that you notice you become nicer to people who seem frustrated because you're like, they may be frustrated because they're pushing against something that's not moving. He says, oh yeah, so much has changed. This thing may or may not change, but you have. And so if some of you are pushing against something that you don't see anything different, it's really that God could be strengthening you for something else he's going to have you to do. You just got to be faithful. Be devoted to prayer, being watchful and thankful, and let God do what he does. Let's pray. God, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for the testimony of these two girls, and I thank you for such amazing truths. I thank you for the, the sin and what's going to be happening this, uh, this weekend and what's going to be happening in February. God, I thank you for Winterfest and what's going to happen in the hearts of students. I'm thankful for the baptisms that are going to take place after that. God, I'm thankful for the hearts that are going to be moved, and I'm thankful for the rocks that are being pushed in this room even tonight. And God, I'm thankful that my friend Randy is sitting at your right hand as a well um, and hearing well done, good and faithful servant. And God, I thank you for his life and for our deep friendship. I thank you for these girls and for their leadership and their example. And God, may they just remind, if nobody listens to a word that, 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 that I shared May they hear their sisters, may they hear their peers say to just keep doing and being faithful to what God has called you to do. And God, you'll take care of those things that we have no control over. What a, oh man, I need to hear that. And thankful for those that do. And it's through Jesus we pray and we all say together, amen. God bless you guys. Have a great night. Have a great night. Hey, let's thank Kate and Edie, y'all. Thank them. That was a great job.